especially since he's one of my professors. <laughs> and this is called Examination. It's an excerpt from a memoir I'm writing. After months spurring my nose in books on the parts of the brain, I won first at the regional competition in Natchitoches for psychology. Now, a week later, on a bright yellow school bus to Baton Rouge, I study the synapses that would later go haywire in my own head and half make conversation with the freshman next to me. At first glance, he looks just like Isaac, a boy I met at debate camp two summers ago. I look him up and down for a second, then continue studying for the competition. I evaluate the various methods for testing brain damage. I memorize lists of medication used to treat disorders latent in my lobes. I rattle off symptoms of severe manic depression under my breath. Lack of appetite, lack of sleep, irritability, flight of ideas, endless energy, fast-paced speech, sexual promiscuity, delusion, suicidal thoughts, sadness, restlessness, drug use, hallucinations. The list continues. Somehow, though, the conversation with the boy next to me multiplies and grows more complex. We start discussing religion. He swears his, his church has taught him the truth. He is so certain of his belief, and I am happy to debate. He listens attentively and smiles. When I'm done ranting, he says that the Bible is really just a book of metaphor, and that Christianity is tainted. He describes the differences in denominations says he understands why I fled from the Baptist faith. He asked me to consider coming to his church. He says it's different. I can't remember if he says he'll pray for me, but I know that he does. When we get to Louisiana State University, I realize that I haven't looked at a single dog-eared page or study since we left the Shreveport city limits. I go to the hotel and fall asleep, exhausted and not expecting to remember my dreams. Instead, I wake from a nightmare. The nightmare was simple. A majestic sphinx-like black dog sits on an off-white couch from my childhood. I, it has sharp, blood-red veined eyes that glare into mine. It stares. Then I wake up shaking, terrified and sure that this has some kind of meaning. I cannot get back to sleep. Eventually, I go to the test room after everyone else awakens. Sitting at my desk, my stomach trembles and I choke on basic questions. All I can think about is that black dog and how that damn dog is like God spelled backwards. All I can think is that God's trying to speak to me, and here I am in a quiet room, filling in blanks on a psychology exam. I do not connect the symptoms that I've studied to myself. I do not think of childhood highs and lows or the empty bottles in parking lots. I do not think of the old taste of chemical drip in the back of my throat, or the spin of the treadmill's belt against my shoes, or the naked smell of nights tangled in strangers' skin. I do not think of the clinch of eyelids to hold back tears, or the touch of raised bumps to my fingers, or the scratch of scissors against my hips, or pains pulsed through my body. Instead, I turn my test in early, determined to find the meaning of the dream. I do not do well in the psychology competition. I walk back to the school bus that afternoon, still plagued by that dream. I scribble freely in a notebook the whole way home, trying to tap into my subconscious. Finally, we reach Shreveport, and I return home, determined still to discover the root of the symbolism. There's something there, I feel it. Amongst varying accounts of the meaning of my specter, I find that Winston Churchill referred to troubles with mental health as a black dog. Seconds after I research my dream, though, I close the windows of Internet Explorer and bury the information in the back of my memory. In early August of 2008, my body rebels again. And at first, psychosis isn't black at all. It's more like a bright rainbow. Much like one sees colored spots after looking directly into a flashing light, manic depression induces visions in my mind's eye. 5,000 lights converge into an arc that dangles right above me, that strands me in a chemically induced heaven for weeks until the medicine kicks in, until I blink and I discover, too late, this is hell. Suddenly, in between white walls, I have the horrid realization that something strange has touched everything, and am horrified to find that I have been eaten alive, that dirty fingers have crawled across each cubic inch of skin, that something has oozed out of me and touched everyone I love, clawing like a hungry animal at bathtubs, chewing on my days and nights like a dog would eat a bird, biting at my wings. The doctors say that my mood swings are something more, that when the serotonin sinks through my skull, the chemicals flood, then mix. 
But even after my diagnosis, even after I've been through hell, I have trouble swallowing my fear of all those evil negated terms. I swallow medication with the promise I will be coined as diseased, disabled, unstable, incapable, abnormal. I fear that someone somewhere will use the negated language of disorder to negate my emotions, to negate my very self. I become the one I read about. The grainy photograph tucked nicely between pages of my psychology textbook. I shake to think that my condition lies next to some high schooler's math homework, a compass, and a bottle of glue. I think back to the student I used to be, who looked in shock at symptoms, drool forming as I forgot to close my lips, the student who had turned the page, who would rattle off symptoms for a test the next day, and then quickly forget. My nightmare was simple to ignore until it became reoccurring. Until, like a pop of a cider or champagne bottle, these episodes became habitual, expected, and yet unnerving. Thank you.